Time now for Reporters Roundtable to put the headlines in perspective. Bud and Ross both still with us. And Ross, we'll start with you and Governor Abbott's unveiling of his tax proposal. You wrote a column about this last week and you pointed out it doesn't lower anybody's property taxes. It's not something the state does. Yeah, the governor says he didn't say it was going to lower property taxes. It's going to cut growth in the future. But the immediate impression everybody gets is that he's lowering property taxes. In fact, Connie Burton, a state senator from Tarrant County put out a press release that said, come with me on this campaign and help me help the governor lower property taxes. So we're starting that, that argument back up again. Well, this is an appeal to centrist voters. If Texas is becoming more purple, the big appeal to purple voters is don't get taxed like California. Republicans can keep your taxes low. This is the new appeal that's going to be the pitch in this year's election and probably more to come. Well, yeah, we'll hear more about it, you think. Now, it'll become a, a real drumbeat. The Republicans will not be able to win elections solely on, on uh, guns, faith and values issues. They, they'll appeal more to that fiscal centrist voter, particularly with Latinos, that plays well. Gotcha. Ross, uh, several challengers outraised incumbents in the latest fundraising totals. We got the emails. I know you did, too, down there in Austin as well. Trey Blocker outraised Ag Commissioner Sid Miller in the Republican primary. Uh, separately, though, Democrat Justin Nelson, he outraised Attorney General Ken Paxton. Half a million was his own money. But what's the takeaway here? Well, the real takeaway is how much money do they have on hand? Ken Paxton has a bunch of money in the bank. It's true that his, his challenger raised more. But it's also true that Paxton has much more money than his challenger. Really what you're trying to do here is muster enough money to get your name and ideas in front of enough people that they vote for you when you get in the booths, into the voting booths on February 20th through March 6th. Um, and you need a lot of money to do that in a statewide election. You and you see look at local races, you know, Huff Hines raised quite a bit more than Angela Paxton. And uh, Beverly Powell, one of Connie Burton's opponents, outraised her in this first go round. So you see the money pile up, but it is about how much you've got left by the end of the race, not how much you start with. How much you start with, good point. Uh, Ross, a Republican candidate up here in Dallas County, uh, Republican candidate for commissioner, his name is Stephen Stanley. He says his challenger, J.J. Koch, offered to pay off his campaign debts if Stanley would drop out. Should people be shocked about this, or is, is this just politics like Koch's attorney says it is? It's pretty brazen. It's, you know, it, 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 even if it turns out to be legal, it's pretty brazen, and it gave them something to talk about that gives, gets attention on their race that they probably weren't otherwise going to get. In fact, it's too late to get off the ballot, and this is just sort of a noisy way to get everybody to know your name. Hey, look what my opponent offered me to do. You see this more in a quieter way where suddenly someone just quits campaigning and right. doesn't come out anymore and and so the, and then after the the financials come in an opponent has paid off their campaign debt but you don't see somebody asking somebody else to drop out that was interesting indeed gentlemen thank you guys very much we appreciate it.